In this video clip, we are going to have a look at 10 amazing educational technologies that are available to us online. Our first tool is going to be No Hands App. Uh, that's the link we're looking for, No Hands e Heidi. Uh, what No Hand app is initially is a random student selector. Uh, once you land on the No Hands uh, home screen, you will see a quick intro or what the app looks like. And it's really simplistic. This is what I like about No Hands app is because it doesn't take a lot of space on your screen. It's just a small tray that it can customize. What it does basically, once you tap on the tray, it will select a student from your class. What it, enables you to do is to have your students engaged. You can click on this tool and a student, uh, a random name will, will pop up. It's called no hands because basically it eliminates a need for you to, to ask students to raise their hands. If you would like to learn how to customize this tool, how to import your class name list, I will be doing an in-depth tutorial, which I will link in the description. Moving on to the next tool, it's really powerful in terms of organizing your workflow. It's Google Classroom. Once you sign into the Google Classroom and create your class, you will be able to manage the workflow. You'll be able to see your, your students who assign quizzes, assign assignments, assign materials, to collect those assignments, grade them all in one place. This will be a, a storage for different materials uh, for your students to access. So instead of um, sharing links, everything will be stored in one place in your Google Classroom, simplifying and streamlining your workflow. All right, moving on to our third tool, which is going to be Plickers. Yeah, Plickers. Plickers, Plickers. That's the tool you're looking for, Plickers.com. You create a question for your audience to answer. And once you post this question on the board, all the audience needs to have is this Plicker card. Your students don't have to have laptops or iPads or uh, anything really. Each student will have his or her own QR code. Uh, students will show their cards, you scan it with your phone. Uh, you will be able to see the data right away or you can go to score sheets. You can go back and see that. The tool does not require any technology apart from the projector and your phone and well those, those cards. Tool number four is going to be Padlet. Uh, Padlet Dot com. Padlet is a collaborative uh, workspace for your students, which enables you to create a Padlet. A Padlet is basically a wall. You can choose between different designs. I prefer uh, Canvas. Can what, what Padlet does initially, it creates a wall. Let's name it New Wall. You can customize colors, everything, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. Are you gonna start post? Uh, what did you learn? today. Once you've done that, once you share this with the students, students will start answering your question. It's a social tool. They are able to see each other answers in your post. You can embed video clips, you can post links as a way to engage students in sharing their uh, thoughts in a uh, uh, in a virtual space. If you would like to learn more about how to begin with the Padlet, uh, the link to the in-depth tutorial will be in the description. Right, so moving on to our next tool, Socrative. At Socrative.com, a platform for uh, summative or formative assessment. Really easy to use. I'm just going to demonstrate after you log in. Uh, as a teacher, you will land on your home screen where you will be creating quizzes. Best part, once you assign the quiz you've created to the students, you can see the, the real data. So once students are answering, you can see on your phone or on your computer the real data. It helps students who are not doing well or see students who are doing too quickly. You can assign a more challenging task available on your phone or you can launch it from your computer. Uh, everything is in there. Really smart way to go about your grading. There are short answers as well. So it's not only multiple choice, short answers as well, but you will have to mark them yourself. Uh, actually, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Don't, uh, don't take my word for it. You can, uh, the Socrative can mark short answers as well. Now, moving on, we go into Nearpod. Uh, Nearpod.com. All right, Nearpod is, I think, brilliant tool in uh, putting lessons together. You know how sometimes you have a PowerPoint you want to show to the class, you have another video they want to watch, you have something else, you have quiz maybe, and all those things in different places. What Nearpod allows you to do is to create one seamless lesson that you put all those things 
in one lesson. You can uh, add content from the web, uh, you can add your own content like a PowerPoint or whatever you use, but then the beautiful part about Nearpod is that you can embed in your class all those activities like open-ended question, matching pairs, quizzes, polls and stuff. You can do a live lesson which you control or you can do a student-paced lesson so students just go through your lesson through all those activities you've created at their own pace. If you're doing a student's paced lesson as a teacher, you can see what students are doing, whether they are on task or not. On one hand, you provide autonomy for students to go ahead and do what they want, but on the other hand, you still have this element of control. So that was Nearpod. Uh, the next tool we're going to have a look at is going to be edpuzzle.com. Once you set up your account in Edpuzzle, you will land on your home screen. And what Edpuzzle is, it's a tool that enables you to work with, with video clips. I just want to show you a little example. This is a clip on day in life of ancient Athenian. Those gray marks here are questions. Once students watch the video clip, uh, a question will pop up. They will need to, well, in this case, they need to select a couple. I haven't watched the video clip, so I'm just going to uh, guess it. That shows them the correct answer. They can, they can rewind watch, skip, or continue, and so it goes. It's just a beautiful tool to have to enhance video clips, not just simply project them on, the, on this overhead projector and have students watch, but instead you can embed questions. Beautiful tool. I'll be doing an in-depth tutorial as well. The link will be in the description. Right, moving on to the next one. Okay, actually next two are going to be tools for classroom management. So the first one we're going to have a look at is called Class Dojo. It lends itself especially well to elementary and uh, middle school students, not so much for high school. What uh, Class Dojo does creates little avatars like you see here for students. When students accomplish work or they demonstrate behavior you want to demonstrate, you can assign points to them and that incentivizes the learning process, getting points uh, for being on task or whatever rules you set up in your classroom and then they can spend those points. Some teachers set up a token economy where they, they earn those points but then they can spend those points on getting classroom privileges like changing a seat. It's down to you how you set up your a token economy, but what, what Class Dojo does for you as a teacher it enables you to create classroom management and then you can connect it to the families, share what students are doing on a regular basis, there's a parent connect, you can control it with your phone entirely. There are a lot of tools that are embedded in Class Dojo, like Classroom Timer, Voice Meter, Random Student Selector. There are a lot of tools there. Uh, another class management tool, uh, a bit more uh, sophisticated than Class Dojo, but yeah, but still pretty cool stuff. It's called ClassCraft.com. ClassCraft invites students to create their character inside your class and they will be leveling up. Great way to gamify your classroom, bring this gamification factor into your instructions. You can create quests that students complete, they get points, they can, they can bypass, they can customize their characters, the entire ecosystem that you create inside your class. Uh, again, you can only use the limited version of ClassCraft, just assign those points, have them students level up, but you can also go as far as to gamifying your entire lesson and curriculum. And there, there are a lot of resources on ClassCraft a web page that will guide you through the process. If you've done Class Dojo, you're looking for something else, something more exciting, this is a tool for you to try out. All right, finally, tool number 10, and thank you, if you haven't quit, thank you for bearing with me till the end, Minecraft Education. If you're not familiar with Minecraft at all, Minecraft started out as a game, but it made its way into education, and right now we are fortunate enough to have a, an official Minecraft education edition which has uh, features specifically geared to classroom use. Uh, it's much easier to use Minecraft education edition uh, rather than simple Minecraft. But anyways, uh, what Minecraft is essentially is a game that is so versatile, is so uh, creative, they call them sandbox games. Uh, basically it means that it's a sandbox and within this game you can do whatever you want with the resources available. In Minecraft case, are blocks, so the, the entire world is made up of blocks 
and students can create, they can solve problems, they can do, you know, whatever you design them to do inside the Minecraft. We've used Minecraft for science, math, language arts, a lot of things, and this is just a couple of examples that demonstrate what students can do. If you've never uh, seen, played, experienced Minecraft, that will not make much sense to you, but to kind of give you uh, an idea what the students are doing, they're solving problems together either creating a storyline or solving a math problem or doing an art project within a Minecraft world and you as a teacher have a overall control over the world uh, you host this world and students connect from their devices to this world so it's a multiplayer experience and that what makes Minecraft so powerful because they are interacting with each other within one world either on problem or creative story writing you know the, the, there's literally no limit to what you can do with Minecraft. That's why if you go to the Minecraft Education website, you will see so many resources uh, on math, computer science, and uh, some teachers go to great length creating those beautiful worlds. You can download those worlds. It's an open source. So there's an alignment with a common core curriculum, innovative source, uh, talking about 21st century skills, critical thinking, problem solving, uh, innovation. Everything is in there. Everything is in Minecraft. I strongly encourage you to find a person, a community, a tech integration specialist in your school, in your building, who will show you the ropes uh, or start learning it yourself. I'll be doing a series of in-depth tutorials on Minecraft as well, and I'll link them in the description to this video clip. So let's wrap up really quickly. The first thing we looked at was no hands, a, a random student selector, really easy to use, the simplest tool you can imagine, but really, really powerful. I'll be doing a tutorial on how to set, up, set it up a bit later. The second tool we looked at was a Google Classroom. Beautiful and simple tool. Streamline your grading, streamline the, how you share resources with students. Really nice tool once you get a handle on it. The third tool we looked at was Plickers. A low-tech yet really powerful tool to get formative assessment data, to create questions, get feedback. The fourth tool we had a look at was a Padlet workspace for your students to answer questions, collaborate. We looked at Socrative as well as a way to get formative summative data, creating exit, exit tickets, creating quizzes and having an overview, a live overview of what the students are doing. Neopod was the next tool where we talked about putting all the materials together in one cohesive lesson and then either doing a live stream or teacher paced or student paced embedding all of those formative assessment, different activities, collaboration boards, discussion boards, all in one place, everything, everything is in there. So Edpuzzle, uh, which enables you to embed questions in the video clips, uh, works beautifully for any grade level. Class Dojo and Class Craft, both serve the same purpose of incentivizing uh, the learning by giving points, giving some rewards to the students, but uh, class Dojo, last uh, learning curve for will be for you as a teacher. It's very simple to use. Classcraft, on the other hand, is much more advanced, much more versatile. A lot of learning on your part should happen before you start, but also once you get to grips with the Classcraft, you will see the rewards. You will see the engagement level skyrocket on behalf of students. You will see a lot of things in a different way. Finally, we looked at Minecraft, it brings together critical thinking, collaboration, uh, all those buzzwords we hear all the time, and a strong community as well, strong support community. If you get started, it looks a bit complicated, especially if you haven't played games before. It might be a bit daunting, but once you start learning, once you start step by step, uh, it's, a, it's a learning curve, but there's a lot of resources that are available. Oh yeah, that's, so that's, that's it for today. Uh, these were 10 tools to help you integrate technology into your classroom. There will be in-depth tutorials that follow if you would like to explore any of those tools in more depth. Also, uh, leave a comment, let me know which tools do you use in your classroom and which tools you would like me to feature in the future. Yeah, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you uh, like the content I produce. Come back for more uh, ad tech video clips. See you later. Bye-bye.